Welcome to another episode of the Weekly Roundup. Today, we cover stories from West Texas, where a doctor makes controversial claims of a silver bullet off-label use inhaled steroids for COVID-19, to the Italian cover trial, which is investigating ivermectin for early-stage COVID-19, the INO4800 vaccine, the DACA trial, which shows favorable results for favipiravir versus COVID-19. And finally, at the end of the episode, we will highlight a few of our reviewers' comments from our last week's episode of the Weekly Roundup. All of this starts now. We start our roundup today with a West Texas doctor who believes he has come up with an approach to effectively treat COVID-19. Dr. Richard Bartlett has practiced medicine in Texas for 28 years, and according to his claims, he has advised ex-governor of Texas, Rick Perry, for a number of years. Now, Dr. Bartlett also does a regular weekly radio update on COVID-19 in West Texas, and recently he found himself embroiled in controversy when he declared that the treatment of inhaled steroid, or ICS, budesonide is a silver bullet for treating COVID-19. So. Let's take a step back here and make a few quick points. First, the doctor knows all too well the politics and regulatory considerations of the U.S. healthcare system, and as such, he must know that making such claims is bound to stir up controversy within these systems. Second, he is not alone in considering this approach, as world-renowned universities such as England's Oxford University are also studying this type of regimen. Third, and this is important for those who may want to just dismiss this out of hand, as Dr. Barlett is part of a movement of community doctors demonstrating practical potential approach to reducing the severity of the pandemic. Any real-world data should be embraced rather than ridiculed, and if it turns out promising, rapidly incorporated into research. And fourth, that certain societal forces will pounce on one mistake in messaging in an attempt to tarnish an entire real-world approach with promise, which evidences just how politicized health and medicine has become in the age of COVID-19. So first things first, let's take a look at who the doctor is. Dr. Richard Bartlett has practiced medicine in Dallas, as I mentioned earlier, and in West Texas for over two decades. With past political aspirations, he had some past dealings with controversy, having been investigated by the state board for allegations of ordering unnecessary tests and procedures for several patients. When asked about these accusations at the time, Dr. Bartlett said that the complaint came from HMOs with a major nationwide insurance provider, although the company would neither confirm nor deny their involvement in the allegations at this point. Now, Dr. Bartlett also purportedly was selected some years ago by Governor Rick Perry to join a health disparities task force with a goal of exploring how to make health care available to all Texans. And he apparently serves on health missions and appears to be a dedicated doctor to the cause of healthcare for all. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, he also runs a weekly radio show with updates on COVID-19 in West Texas. So now let's turn to the claim of inhaled steroid bedesonide as a silver bullet for treating COVID-19. It is a mistake to make a medical claim in the U.S. until the evidence accumulates to a point of clarity. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that Dr. Bartlett's approach isn't potentially a real possibility, and certainly with what we have seen so far, it should be further explored if there is truth to it. Now, in a recent interview, Dr. Bartlett suggests that low COVID-19 death rates in nations such as Taiwan, Iceland, and Singapore are due in part to the approach he employs for his practice. For example, in Taiwan, where there are 24 million people, only seven have died. That these nations have a lower COVID-19 death rate is accurate according to the available online tracking systems. He includes Japan as another example, with over 120 million people, less than 1,000 have died. And so this does beg the question, how could that be? Why do countries such as these have such low death rates? According to Bartlett, he suggests social distancing doesn't work as well in Taiwan and Japan, since these countries are incredibly densely populated. 
Trial site news embarked on a preliminary review of his claims that these countries use his approach, and the evidence is minuscule. There is a dearth of literature on what he claims to be commonplace, which leads one to believe that the doctor may get ahead of himself here. So, Dr. Larry Nelson, chief medical officer of Midland Memorial Hospital, responded to Bartlett, countering that there is no evidence for his claim. Dr. Wilson did, however, acknowledge the recent results from the recovery trial, where some steroids, such as dexamethasone, could be effective in helping with severe COVID-19 cases when administered orally or intravenously. But Wilson cautioned, giving patients that are not that ill steroids could do more harm than good, as they have known side effects. Now, in a similar situation to the ivermectin scenario, while physicians apply experiments in the field in off-label use cases and encounter observed success, the fact that they are not done in controlled studies leads the medical establishment to reject them. This kind of challenge raises a difficult chicken or the egg scenario, as there is often not sufficient capital, resources, or human capital, i.e. doctors, nor time to conduct such formal controlled studies in the middle of a pandemic. However, there has been some research looking into this very question. First, we take a look at a group from England and Australia who studied this treatment and suggested that there is some evidence to suggest that taking ICS may be beneficial in dealing with virus infections, specifically those due to coronavirus. For example, Pre-treatment of human respiratory epithelial cells in vitro with budesonide in combination with glycocoparinium, in combination with glycocoparonium and formoterol has inhibitory actions on coronavirus HCOV229E replication and cytokine production. Now, Dr. Bartlett suggests Japan uses ICS extensively. However, according to the Halpin et al., the evidence for ICS treatment involves a very low-quality case series report involving three patients with COVID-19, requiring oxygen but not ventilation posts ICS involving cyclicinide. Now, in another report in the Journal of Infection and Chemotherapy, the authors noted three cases of patients with COVID-19 pneumonia successfully treated with ICS that persists in the lung. The authors acknowledged that greater study is required. And then there was the recovery trial results out of the University of Oxford, identifying the use of dexamethasone, or corticosteroid, as a way to reduce deaths associated with COVID-19, which opens a pathway for pursuit involving a corticosteroid. Now, in this study, the drug was administered orally or intravenously. And so, while the doctor has been facing attacks over his claim of a silver bullet for COVID-19, among which a local hospital, Midland Memorial Hospital, disagreed, stating that there is no such thing as a silver bullet treatment for COVID-19. However, as we reported by News West 9, the doctor's patients came to his defense, declaring the physician saved lives, which, according to this local news, the doctor has treated well over a dozen patients, and the success rate is purported to be 100%. And then, as it turns out, Trial Site News reported on a significant clinical trial led by Queensland University of Technology and, and Oxford University, centering on assessing the effectiveness of inhalers as possible treatment for COVID-19. It's called the STOIC trial. The patients are recruited at Churchill Hospital in Oxford, England. The investigators will evaluate the efficacy of inhaled corticosteroid therapy compared to the standard of care in participants in early COVID-19 illness. And so, we can see here that Dr. Bartlett is not alone in considering this approach. So, Dr. Richard Bartlett is outspoken, and while he may have made a mistake by making a claim about an approach to treating COVID-19 that can't be proven with just a couple dozen treated, that doesn't mean the doctor may not be onto something noteworthy. After all, it turns out that there is some research ongoing into this general class of treatment, evidenced most recently by the results of the recovery trial out of the University of Oxford. Now, we understand that in this time of uncertainty, people want to have a savior and are looking for hope wherever they can find it. 
And so, the scientific community should continue not only with the vaccines and advanced biological approaches to killing off COVID-19, but also pay attention to doctors in the field from West Texas and South Florida to France, Taiwan, Peru, and Bangladesh, and consider that real-world activities that may in some cases lead to some promising pathways is possible. And as always, we will be keeping an eye on this story as it continues to develop. Meanwhile, IRCCS Sacred Heart Don Calabria Hospital is an accredited Italian provider in the Veneto region that accommodates about 30,000 patients per year, includes 968 beds, and employs approximately 1,712. The regional provider has come together with Mario Negri Institute for Pharmacological Research, a nonprofit research institute dedicated to clinical and biomedical research to conduct the cover trial, a 102 patient prospective multi center randomized double blind trial to assess efficacy and safety of ivermectin for the treatment of initial infection with SARS CoV 2. Now, it's led by infectious and tropical disease expert Dr. Zeno Bisoffi. The study nears launch and will be conducted through August with final reports planned for October of this year. The study will span regions of Italy and Spain. Now, this phase two clinical trial is known as the COVID trial, or COVID ivermectin, ivermectin for treatment of COVID-19. And it targets, as I mentioned earlier, 102 patients. The prospective multi-center randomized double-blind clinical trial has been designed so that Italian investigators can evaluate the efficacy and safety of ivermectin for the treatment of initial infection of SARS-CoV-2, the virus behind the COVID-19 pandemic. The sponsors have set up three study arms, including placebo and ivermectin 600 microgram per kilogram daily for five consecutive days, plus placebo, and then ivermectin 1200 microgram per kilogram daily at empty stomach with water for five consecutive days. Patients will be randomized at emergency room of hospitals in addition to outpatient ambulatory care and at home, based on routine procedures of recruiting centers established by the sponsors. The sponsors disclosed that for arms A and B, the total number of placebo tablets involved will actually be calculated by a study dedicated pharmacist, factoring in the number of tablets that should be taken in case the patient with the same weight is assigned to arm C. Primary outcomes include the number of serious drug adverse reactions within 14-day periods, and viral load assessed after day 7, measured by quantitative digital droplet PCR, and the study sponsors include six secondary outcome measures. Now, patients must be 18 or older and positively confirmed with SARS-CoV-2. They must consent to participation and the processing of personal data. A COVID-19 severity score of greater than three and ability to take oral drugs. Now, on the other hand, any patient that is pregnant, lactating, suffers from unknown CNS disease, doesn't provide informed consent, under dialysis, has any severe medical condition within prognosis of greater than six months, under either warfarin or antiviral or chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine treatment, would be excluded from participation in this study. In Italy, the sites include the following list which we will provide a link in the description below to our original article on this subject, where you can find this and other information mentioned in this story. Elsewhere, a leading clinical research organization called LSK Global Pharma Services has inked a deal with the International Vaccine Institute's clinical trials of Inovio's INO4800, a DNA-based COVID-19 vaccine candidate in Korea. In this study, IVI, Seoul National University Hospital, and SNU Bundang Hospital will spearhead the Phase 1 and 2 clinical trials of IVO4800 in that Asian nation. LSK will serve as CRO, overseeing the overall operations, from project management to monitoring, data management, and pharmacovigilance activities. Now, Lee Young, president of LSK Global PS, commented for the Korean Biomedical Review that we are honored to conduct the first approved clinical trial of COVID-19 vaccine in Korea and play our role as a leading contract research organization in addressing the growing expectations for a COVID-19 vaccine. So let's talk about LSK Global PS. LSK positions itself as a leading CRO in Korea 
The business was founded back in the year 2000 and has since evolved to become a one-stop, full-service CRO encompassing all of the major areas of clinical research. By the end of 2019, the company had conducted about 1,153 clinical trials, including 646 Phase three registration trials and about 134 global clinical trials. Meanwhile, the Bangladesh Society of Medicine, or BSM, concluded from a recent study that favipiravir evidences clear-cut safety and effectivity against COVID-19. Apparently, the DACA trial, a randomized and controlled clinical trial conducted in DACA, revealed similar positive effects of favipiravir, or Avigan, in COVID-19 patients, as has been the case in China and Russia. The clinical trial sponsor, BSM, observed that of the patients in the clinical trial, 96% were found to have negative test results after the favipiravir treatment. Now, favipiravir is approved in multiple countries targeting COVID-19, including China, Russia, and India. The U.S. Department of Defense spent over $200 million testing it in clinical trials just five years ago for exactly the kind of pandemic now faced. Now, this study's protocol, NCTO 440-2203, was approved by the Directorate General Drug Administration, or the DGDA, and the Bangladesh Medical Research Council called the DACA trial, the double-blinded, placebo-controlled, randomized clinical trial conducted in the nation's largest city, was reported on recently by Gulam Magni Mola, assistant professor of the Department of Medicine at DACA Medical College and Hospital. Dr. Mala just presented the results to a seminar titled Study on Safety and Efficacy of Favipiravir on COVID-19 Patients in Selected Hospitals of Bangladesh. So let's talk about the results here. With 50 COVID-19 positive patients participating after four days of favipiravir treatment, 48% of the patients were COVID-19 negative, and by the 10th day, that number came to 96%. Other findings included the patient group on favipira showed lung function improvement three times higher than the placebo group. The favipira group had a 44% more viral clearance than those on the placebo. The study team also found that the favipira subjects had no significant side effects. Now, the drug, known under the brand name of Avigan, was the intellectual property of Japan's Toyama chemical until it became a generic in 2019. Now, Beacon Pharmaceuticals will manufacture favipiravir under the name favipira, which, much like in India, is called favaflu and made by Glenmark Pharmaceuticals. Now, Professor Alam was identified in the clinicaltrials.gov U.S. database as one of the principal investigators. In the Daily Star, he was quoted saying that we are pleased to reach a clear-cut decision for treating COVID-19 patients through the DACA trial conducted on our own patients. The principal investigator thanked all the doctors, nurses, and health workers for their tireless efforts. And finally, before this episode comes to a close, as promised, here are a few comments left on our previous episode of the Weekly Roundup from our audience. As always, we read through all your comments we get, although we can't respond to them all. B. Tango asks, has anyone looked into how Singapore has been treating COVID-19? We appreciate the suggestion, B. Tango. We'll look into it. Lewis What's-His-Name wonders if I, the host of this show, is in artificial intelligence. Now, Lewis, as far as I'm aware, I'm not. However, if I was in artificial intelligence, would I really know? Jeff Smith asks if we have looked into INDB or SGN001. Thank you for the suggestion, Jeff. We'll look into it. And finally, John Cookson says, excellent information without adherence to bias. Thank you, John. We try very hard to always be transparent and honest with our reporting. And that wraps up our episode of The Weekly Roundup. As always, we appreciate each and every one of you for joining us today. And as always, we'll see you next time.